lesson from the first letter of St. Peter, the Apostle. Beloved, be all like-minded in prayer, compassionate, lovers of the brethren, merciful, reserved, humble, not rendering evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but, contrariwise, blessing. For unto this were you called, that you might inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they may speak no deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace, seek after peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the just, and his ears unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you suffer anything else for justice sake, blessed are you. So have no fear of their fear and do not be troubled, but hallow the Lord Christ in your hearts. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Unless your justice exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the ancients, You shall not kill, and that whoever shall kill shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be liable to the Sanhedrin, and whoever says, You fool, shall be liable to the fire of Gehenna. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift before the altar, and go first to be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. The saving words of the gospel. Please kneel for your prayer for vocations. Let us ask God to give worthy priests, brothers, and sisters to his holy church. O oh God, we earnestly beseech thee to bless this diocese with many priests, brothers, and sisters who will love thee with their whole strength and gladly spend their entire lives to serve thy church and to make thee known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children. Mary, Queen of the Clergy. A reminder that we are collecting a spiritual bouquet for our new bishop, Bishop Haying. Uh, you can participate in this spiritual bouquet uh, both online and in a written form. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, our uh, people involved in the Tridentine Mass Society have uh, finally figured out how to print something out so that you can write something down. At least I hope so. That is my earnest desire. In any event, you can always go to latinmassmadison.org that's latinmassmadison.org and fill out um, the online form. Spiritual bouquets are, are beautiful things to do. They're ways of linking ourselves together in Intent, good intention in prayer and also offering uh, support, real support for uh, the one who receives the, the bouquet. I know that in my life, whenever I have gotten one, it's been a boost, a real boost. And you know, bishops have extremely, <laughs> extremely difficult jobs. And to know in a concrete way that people are praying for them when they see the numbers of prayers and the kinds of things that are doing, being done, the holy hours that are being offered to them or uh, acts of fasting or mortification or rosaries or time before the Blessed Sacrament, whatever it might be. When they see this, 
uh, I can assure you that it's a, it's a real, it's uplifting, it's a real boost. It helps a great deal. Um, I'll also remind you that we have hand missiles, uh, wonderful, beautiful hand missiles from Angelus Press um, at a huge discount. Um, we have them in Latin and in English and in Latin and in Spanish. And uh, they can be a treasured thing that you can hand on or you can use for your whole life. To put your holy cards in them that you've collected from marriages and funerals and ordinations and religious professions and so forth. I remember seeing some people with hand missiles that they'd had their whole lives so full of these cards that they actually had to put a, they actually had to tie them shut <laughs> in order to be able to keep everything inside. And they think about what that could mean to you over your, over the course of your life. It's a really quite a beautiful thing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. One of the things that we hear today is about the harmony of the brethren. In the first reading, Peter describes how Christians ought to deal with each other, to be like-minded in prayer. I was just talking about a spiritual bouquet a moment ago. Or to be like-minded in prayer, the hand missile can help you do that. To be like-minded in prayer, to have good intentions for each other, with each other, about each other, knowing, trying to understand what the needs of your, your brethren are, what your neighbor is, so that in true charity, the sacrificial love that we should have, you can then seek the good of the other in prayer, of course, but also in word and in action. Refraining from doing those things which will harm actively seeking to do those things which are good, beneficial, in word, in deed, certainly in intention, in an attitude. And, of course, you know, this isn't always going to work. Sometimes you will be repaid with evil for good that you do. Sometimes that comes out of people's fear. I think it's a beautiful comment today that, that Peter makes. In that very last part of that reading, where he says, have no fear of their fear, and do not be troubled. We can see a great deal, uh, a great deal of uh, examples of how fear of Christ, fear of Christianity is sweeping through society in the kind of vicious attacks that are mounted against the Holy Church and against those who publicly live their faith. But have no fear of their fear. Instead, always extend yourself in good words, good deeds towards those people. And when things are out of sort, seek reconciliation. Our Lord himself talks about the need to be reconciled to the brethren, to your neighbor, to your loved ones, before coming in to the altar. Be reconciled. Leave your gift before the altar and go first to be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. If you are out of harmony, if you are out of sync with your neighbor, with your loved one, then it has to be put to right. You think about all the times that we put ourselves out of sync, out of harmony with God himself. How many over a day or a week or a month or a year or the course of a lifetime do we sin against God and offend Him? And yet we can always be reconciled. In the sacrament of penance especially, we are able to be reconciled with God, with ourselves, with Holy Church, with our neighbor. It's one of the reasons why we have to consider the virtue of justice whenever we have made a good confession. What injustice do I owe to those whom I might have harmed, those whom I have offended? In justice, reparation has to be done. It's part of the process of being reconciled, being brought back into harmony with God, with self, with the church, and with neighbor. 
The reconciliation that God offers us, of course, is superabundant and by far outstrips our little human efforts. But those efforts still must be made. Reconciliation takes effort. Reconciliation takes work. Sometimes we have to strive to be reconciled with those with whom we have a serious, a serious conflict. Do not fear their fear and do not be troubled and seek to be reconciled anyway. Sometimes it takes a lot of effort to get up and to go to make a good confession. Seek out those confession times to actually get up out of your chair and go when you know you need to go. It takes some work. It takes effort. It takes courage. Do not fear your fear and do not be troubled. Get up and go. The benefits, of course, are eternal. Think of what you lose when you are not reconciled with God, with yourself, with the church, and with your neighbor. Are you ever really at peace? Do you ever really have a sense of peace if you are not reconciled, if you are not in harmony? Well, one of the things that then being reconciled can bring is that sense of inner peace, gained almost immediately when you make a, a, a good confession. I don't know how many thousands of times I've received, a, you know, I always bang on online, I'm always banging on about going to confession, go to confession, go to confession. I've received over the years literally thousands of emails from people saying, it's been so long since I've gone, but you're harassing us, harassing us to go to confession all the time. I finally got up and went, and I immediately felt a great peace. It was a huge weight taken off my shoulders. I haven't felt this light and happy for years. These are the kinds of things that people will say. The unburdening is, on a human level, extremely therapeutic. But what we receive, the graces that we receive from God, are of inestimable value. You think about the, the effects of the sacrament of penance. One of the things that the sacrament of penance does, of course, is strengthen us against sinning in the future. But the main effect, of course, is the forgiveness of sins, especially mindful we should be of mortal sins, but also of venial sins. There are many different ways in which venial sins can be forgiven, but mortal sins, we go to the sacrament of penance. And when we have made a good confession of our sins, of everything that we can think of that's a mortal sin, everything that we can remember, sincerely having made an effort to confess everything that you can think of in both kind and number, the sort of thing it is, and how many times, or the frequency that you did it, if you make a good and sincere effort, then those sins are taken away. Though you will have the memory of them, and know that you still have injustice to do some things about them, make reparation and so forth, and do penance for them, they are removed from your soul. It's not as if they're still there, but they're just going to be overlooked. They are gone. They are taken away. They are cleansed away, washed away by the blood of the Lamb. Though your sins be as red as scarlet, they are made as white as snow in the blood of our Lord. Jesus Christ. You never have to worry about them ever being leveled against you in your judgment. They are gone. What an amazing effect in our soul God creates in the sacrament of penance. This is the ordinary means by which he desired us to come to reconciliation with him, with ourselves, 
with the church, and with our neighbor. And there is no sin that is so bad that we can commit that God's infinite power and might cannot forgive. There is no sin so bad that we can commit that Almighty God can't forgive, provided we ask for it, provided we confess it and we ask for forgiveness. A good examination of conscience has to be part of our constant process of seeking harmony with God, with self, with church, and with our neighbor. And then taking, making those efforts, both on a human level and our interpersonal relationships, to be always to be reconciled, to be in harmony, to be unburdened, to not have to carry that weight around of being out of sync with someone. But of course, uh, even more importantly, to be out of sync with God. Make the effort. Do not fear the fear of others. Do not fear your own fear. Overcome it. Do not be troubled. And hallow the Lord Christ in your hearts. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.